start recording here and give everybody an idea as to what's happening. And good evening, everybody. Live and direct time about 7.56 on Monday evening, brought to you by the magic of dryer sheets. Mosquitoes starting to set in out here. These things, I had no idea that they would come in so handy, but they do do a pretty good job of trying to keep the mosquitoes away, so good news on that. If you are going to be doing anything outdoors into the next few days, we do have a lot coming up where it comes to problems with heat and humidity. We'll talk about about that coming up in just a little bit. We'll take a look at weather on other planets, which is really pretty cool to see when you think about it. And we'll also take a look into the tropics, which does have a lot going on uh, with tropical storm or tropical depression Don forming in just to the east of the Caribbean. We also have uh, the possibility of some more heat problems into the next few days. As I said, we also have the problem of some air quality issues going on in parts of the mid south uh, into tomorrow for the metro area. More on that coming up here in just a little. Wow. Let's go ahead and get started this evening and show you more about what's going on on Mars. Again, this is from the Remote Environmental Monitoring Station. I throw this in just because it's really cool to kind of take a look at to see what the weather is on another planet. It comes to us about every couple of days. And we do see again that from about a couple of days ago on Saturday, the temperature was about 9.4 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That was below zero at that location. And on the Curiosity rover, 108 degrees below zero. That was the minimum temperature of the air on Mars at that particular location. And I mean, think about that for a second. Minus 9.4. That's decent uh, warm conditions for Antarctica, but it's on Mars. Atmosphere a lot thinner, so very much on the chilly side there. If you'd like to see more about this, all you have to do is go to mars.nasa.gov for tons more information. Great opportunity to see a lot more details as to what's going on. Earthquakes in the Mid-South. Matter of fact, not much to talk about. One minor earthquake just up around the area of southeast Missouri, and beyond that, not really much going on. And that was about at... Uh, see, 2.16 this morning, so not really too much to report uh, at that location, but uh, one at least might have been felt up in certain locations there. If you have any questions about this or want to see more earthquake information, all you have to do is go to Center for Earthquake Research and Information, and this is, again, a good opportunity to see more about uh, what's going on in and around the Mid-South where it comes to uh, earthquake data out there, so a good opportunity to see more there. Much of what we got going on in the Mid-South area, fairly quiet for tonight from the Bethel Springs Elementary webcam. Things are very quiet for right now. We're we're not seeing too much again to worry about in the way of cloud cover out across the Mid-South. If you'd like to see more about what's going on out there, all you have to do is go to our camera website at wreg.com slash webcams for more. A great opportunity to see more across much of the area. Radar not showing much of anything happening. A few scattered showers just in around northern Mississippi down to around Middle Mississippi and parts of Alabama picking up a few showers and a few thunderstorms there, but not really getting a lot of major activity, and that's good news at this time. We do have a lot going on where heat is concerned. If you take a look up into the mid Plain states just north of the Mid-South area, we have again numerous heat warnings in effect for the better part of about one, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven or eight different states. So hot weather is starting to build, and that could be a problem for us in the near future. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. We continue again to see the possibility of some more problems out across the area with less in the way of moisture out there, not much going on in the way of showers or thunderstorms heading our way anytime soon. Things are exceptionally quiet for right now and should stay that way into the course of the rest of the evening as high pressure does a good job of keeping things very quiet across much of the area, so not much expected coming our way in the way of showers or thunderstorms. Toward the weekend, that may be a different story. We'll talk about that again coming up here uh, in your complete forecast, but if you're expecting anything to help out the garden or anything else out there, it does not look too good where it comes to anything involving showers or thunderstorms helping things out at this time, so better luck with that as we go down the road. Let's see what we've got going on. Low temperatures into tonight. We're we'll seeing, again, temperatures going back into around the lower to mid 70s at best. We're just not looking at too much in the way of major amounts of concerns of very cool weather anytime soon. Lower to mid 70s around Union City and then for the rest of the Mid-South area, as I lose my data once again, apologies about that. 
Very quiet into the area tonight with low temperatures again, lower to mid-70s at best. Going into tomorrow, very much on the hot side for Tuesday. High temperatures back in the lower to mid-90s. Heat index temperatures will be heading for the, again, the mid to upper 90s to right about the lower 100s. If I get that information on there, that would be very nice. But it looks like the computer is going to be a little cranky at this time. So we will hopefully be able to move on for just a moment. Apologies for this. This is what happens during live netcasting. All right, going on to Tuesday night, low temperatures back into the mid-70s. Not much of a chance of any lower temperatures there. High temperatures on Wednesday will be back into around the lower to mid-70s, or high temperatures in the lower to mid-90s at best. Not seeing too much in the way of shower or thunderstorm activity, and heat indexes as we go toward Thursday will be in the lower 100s once again, with high temperatures, regular air temperatures going back into the mid-90s or so. High temp Low temperatures Thursday night, going back into the mid to upper 70s and once again as we head toward Friday high temperatures will be pushing the mid to upper 90s and unfortunately heat index temperatures will be once again in the lower 100s. Now the National Weather Service has already said that we may be looking at the possibility of some problems out there involving the possibility of some heat advisories being issued for the Mid-South. Now, again, this could be a bit of a problem for people who work or exercise outdoors. Chances of showers and thunderstorms just not really being seen at this time anytime soon. Let's go ahead and skip ahead into around Saturday and show you that the high temperatures are expected to be pretty much where they have over the course of the next several days. Nothing coming our way in the way of cooler weather anytime soon, and that's about as good as it gets for right now. And heat index temperatures, once again, will be very very much on the hot side going back into the triple digits it looks like. Now for tomorrow the uh, current conditions what we're looking for for forecast showing the orange bar here uh, in the middle of your screen showing about 99 degrees by 3 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. That's the heat index reading and that's about as hot as it gets for the area coming up into and around uh, tomorrow afternoon. That's again what we t we're taking a look at for right now where it comes to heat index on Tuesday. Now skipping ahead into Wednesday you know Notice that it goes a little bit higher just below the word, the red word temperature bar. You start to see a creep into the lower 100s. And that's, again, where we start to see that building heat going on. And that's where the National Weather Service is saying that we may see some more problems coming on through where it comes to the potential for heat advisories being issued for the Mid-South. So that's what we're going to have to watch out for out there. Now, here's something else we have to pay attention to. The Shelby County Health Department has issued a code orange ozone alert as we go into tomorrow, our code orange ozone forecast. What does that mean? It means that ozone gas, which is produced by our busy society using chemicals as gasoline and oil for fuels, that as it's burned off as fossil fuel exhaust mixes with the sunshine and does a good job of causing ozone gas to form. That's not good for people with anything involving asthma or emphysema or reduced lung capacity or things like that, which means that for tomorrow we'll be seeing the forecast of a code orange ozone alert which again is going to be just over the area for where we should see. Today's air quality index, right now it's about a 93, that's a moderate or yellow. And then as we go into around tomorrow, that's where we see again the potential for uh, young children, older people, anybody with lung ailments to start having problems. And that's not good news out there. It's not as bad as it technically could be. It's not good, but so far it's going to be at about a mid-level or so. Uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups, again, people with emphysema, asthma, stuff like that. Hopefully it will not go to a code red status. That's good news. Again, for now, it's not great news, but it is better news, or purple or crimson, which again, this is going to be very dangerous, which we rarely see levels like that under, again, extraordinary circumstances. So that at least is some good news out there. But reducing trips in your fossil fuel powered engine tomorrow, uh, if you have emphysema, asthma, things like that, indoors with air conditioning is going to be one of your best places to be just to be on the safe side and to pay attention to the National Weather Service. Now, one thing that uh, MATA is doing to help out is that if you're going to be riding the bus to encourage uh, riding the bus and making certain that you stay off 
the roadways with your cars. Uh, all rides tomorrow will be discounted to a quarter. So that is really cool to have happen, but that's for tomorrow only. So that's something to think about, but also a day to definitely pay attention to what's going on with the air quality out there. Let's go ahead and switch to the tropics right now from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, Tropical Storm Don has formed in the area of the Atlantic and is now making its way back toward the west and will continue that direction pretty much going almost due west across the Leeward Islands. We also have another disturbance out into farther into the Atlantic. It's a tropical wave. It does not look like it is a major concern for right now. Uh, the possibility of this thing actually making its way to anything in the next five days is about 30%. That's not huge, but it is something to pay attention to. Now, for Don, if we are going to be taking a look at this, it looks like Don is going to be, again, making its way due west as a tropical storm right along the coast, the northern coast of South America. Now, whether or not this develops into something else, if it heads south of Jamaica and Cuba and turns its way back to the north and west, kind of iffy right now possible but not great chances on this but this is something we still need to pay attention to that and that tropical wave a little bit farther back to the west of us that's something we also need to pay attention to as well but as you can see Don is still well away from the United States but if you are traveling to the Bahamas Jamaica if you're traveling anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico region Florida the east coast now is the time to pay attention to these storms to make certain you know what's going on so think about that did you miss the aurora last night well we could see more of it coming up tonight maybe just some lingering effects of it. If you have a camera and set it on a long-term exposure looking at the northern sky, you may catch some colors out there, possibly if you're well away from city lights and things like that. But as of right now, it looks like things are going to be very quiet when it comes to anything involving the aurora as that last shock wave heads away from us and gets fairly quiet out there. It was a moderate storm system and it did cause some very nice uh, conditions out there as that passed on through. And if you'd like to see more of the pictures of this, great opportunity to learn more. Spaceweather.com has got some great pictures of the aurora from the uh, gallery that they put up there and some amazing pictures mainly north of the Mid-South area. Washington State got some beautiful ones. New Zealand back across the Southern Pacific, some very cool ones as well. So if you'd like to see some of those pictures out there or take a look for them tonight, now would be a good opportunity to do so. Again, that's spaceweather.com for more on that. And tonight at about 9.30, the brightest object in the sky will be a fairly dim pass, but not often a chance to see this one. The Hubble Space Telescope will be passing overhead going from southwest to southeast. It'll be going just to the south, just below Jupiter, between Jupiter and the southwest horizon, and curving over to the area in and around where Saturn is located. Don't often get a chance to see that, but it's a good opportunity to see more. Again, it won't be as bright as Jupiter. It won't be as bright as Venus. It can be one of the third, the about the third brightest object in the sky, uh, following those two planets. So, good opportunity to see more when the International Space Station passes over. This is the Hubble Space Telescope, and this will be visible tonight, starting in the southwest horizon at just before 9:30. You should be looking for a steady moving point of light, no flashers, anything like that. So, you should be able to see that moving on through and a good opportunity to see at least some satellites out there. This information courtesy of Heavens Above. It's a great place to go to to get data on what's going on overhead. Join me on my Facebook page for more information about what's going on with the, your forecast and also on my Twitter account for more details as to what's going on with air quality, science, weather, all kinds of general geekery out there. Glad to keep you updated on what's going on, and we'll be glad to keep you updated as well throughout WREG.com slash weather for more on that. Also, don't forget Monday through Friday to join me on AM730. That is, again, KQPN, um, Yahoo Sports Radio. Bob and Josh will have more on your complete forecast, as well as some great sports chat tomorrow. Good opportunity opportunity to keep up to date and ask some questions of some of the sports movers and shakers across the Mid-South area. Good opportunity to stay up to date with them. That'll be Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m., so a good opportunity to stay there, tune there, and of course my complete forecast coming up there Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. Questions, concerns, comments, kind of hard to see it down here at the bottom of your screen, but austin.onic at wreg.com if you have any questions or concerns. I would love to hear more about it. If there's something on here you would like to see, we would love to have you pass it along, so please let me know. 
Channel, and be glad to update you on what's going on with the weather here on News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. That'll do it from House Onik Backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the Monday evening edition of our exclusive video weather blog. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 tonight with Jim Jaggers on News Channel 3 at 10, and of course Todd Demers bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining us.